Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. So in my life, I have made quite a few leaps of faith. Um, I'm looking back on it when I was thinking of talking about this or sharing this today. I've realised I've done it numerous times through my life. I did it when I first, actually I did it, the first time I did it was when I decided to go and work in, or study in Cape Town for a year doing stable management. Um, I left the guy I was seeing, where I was living, I left everything and packed my bags and set off to Cape Town for a year to a place where I knew nobody <laughs> um, and it was quite an experience. And since then I've been doing it quite often. Well, not often, because it only happens every sort of few years. I did it when I met my future husband. We'd only actually been together for a few weeks before I packed up everything and moved to the UK from Botswana to go and live with him and to see how it worked. Um, obviously it worked quite well because we got married about five years later. But not so well because we got divorced eventually. <laughs> I did it when, actually when we got separated and we eventually got divorced. At the time I was a stay-at-home mum looking after our two young kids and when I left him I realised I needed to earn money and I'd never run a business. Um, I'd worked in businesses but I'd never run my own but I started my own import and distribution company um, which was a massive steep learning curve. I did it again when I left the wine business I'd created and became a coach and most recently I did it when I left Botswana and I moved to the UK with my two sons. Now, all of this has meant that I have a vast experience of taking a leap of faith. Sometimes it's worked out amazingly, and other times it's been incredibly bumpy and tricky. I don't regret any of my leaps of faith, because they've shifted my life in ways that would never have happened if I'd carried on on the path that I had been going. So they've been very dramatic and very drastic sort of turns or changes in my life, and I'm really grateful for them, looking back on them all. But the reason I'm sharing all of this with you today is because if you're contemplating a leap of faith or it's something that's bubbling and you're scared of and you don't know whether you should take it or not, I'm going to share four things that you should keep in mind when you are contemplating it that will hopefully help you transition more smoothly than I have done in some of my leaps of faith. The first step is to know that the decision you're making is in alignment or you are in alignment with the decision that you're making. Now, to know that, it's, well, the way I do it is I imagine myself standing at a crossroads and I'm looking down the different paths that my life could take. I think of where my life would go if I carried on the current path that I was on and I get a feel for it. It's not so much a logical thing, it's more of a sensory thing. And it doesn't always involve looking down and seeing the logical explanation of life. It might be that I see a forest or I see a mountain range or it's sunny, or it's dark, or it's cold, or it's warm. I get a feeling for how that path would make me feel. Um, I did this once with a relationship that I was planning to finish, and I'm sure I've actually shared this in a previous podcast or video blog. I looked at where, I, where my life would go if I was in that relationship. And when I looked down that, I saw my life as being quite staid, quite boring, quite... I would have been living a smaller life. I would have been living a life that he wanted to live, not a life that I chose to live. And when I look down the other path of what my life would go feel like if he wasn't part of that and if I chose my own path, it was funny because I saw a forest, but a, a beautiful forest with sunshine light shining through the, the trees. It felt expansive and open, it felt exciting, it felt freeing and liberating, and it felt like I was expanding. And I think that's the most key thing, is does this choice make you feel expanded and excited and it might even make you feel a little scared, and that's not a bad thing. Because the way our subconscious mind works, when we step into the unknown, it does make us feel scared. You don't want to feel terrified, but a little bit of fear, a little bit of feeling scared is not a bad thing. So that's the first step, is to know that the decision is in alignment with the truth of who you are, and in alignment with what you want in your life and the best for you. And actually, as I'm saying this, something else has popped into mind. And this talks into the post that I made last week, which is all about making decisions and deciding which is the right path for you. And I spoke about aligning with self. And it's knowing what you do want and knowing what you don't want in your life. 
So I'll put a link to that in the show notes below. So make sure you link through to that and just read through that if you want to know a bit more about it, because it's very important to know those things when you're making decisions. The next step is to assess whether you have the resources to make this major shift in life. Now, at times I have had the resources and it's gone quite smoothly, and other times I haven't had the resources. And when I talk about resources, I'm talking about energy and time and finances and emotional capacity. And what else am I talking about? Contacts and connections and infrastructure. So some of the ones that I've, the decisions I've made that haven't got, have gone quite well was starting the wine business. It was very stressful and I learned a hell of a lot in a short space of time. But I had a home, I had my family around me, I had friends, I had the resources to get it started. I maybe could have done had more financial resources because there were times when the finances were a bit tricky and a bit sort of scary. But actually it was all fine in the end. That worked quite well. Then when I shifted to do my coaching practice, again, most likely, and this seems to be a pattern now that I'm talking about it, I could most likely have had more financial security when I made that leap of faith. But again, I had the infrastructure, I had the social infrastructure. I'd lived in the city I was living in for years and years and years. I had a lot of infrastructure in regards to connections to friends, to colleagues, to everyone within the community and the wider community. So I had connections to get my business started. Um, I also had the training that I'd done. So I knew what I was doing. I had that resource to, to add to what I was doing. My children had started school. So I had time and space to be able to work on what I was going to be doing. And then when I moved to the UK, I made it quite a, I didn't make a mistake. I'm very glad we moved to the UK. But what I'm sharing with you is that I didn't, I wasn't aware of what I'm sharing with you now. And I had handed over, and I think I speak about this, I'm trying to remember in which blog um, or podcast, I'll have a look and I'll put the link to it as well. Because I have spoken about this before. But um, I handed over my personal power to both my ex-husband and to my father. And they were amazing. They did try to support us and help us through that. But through a number of different circumstances, it didn't work. So I think it's very important when you're looking at resources to know that you are in control of those resources. You haven't handed your power away to somebody else who then has control over those resources. To make sure that it is within your power to control the resources that you have, that, re that you need for this leap of faith. So that's resources. The next major thing that you need to consider when you're making this leap of faith is mindset. Because when you make a leap of faith, the way the subconscious mind works is that it wants to keep you safe. It's basically, its whole purpose is to ensure your survival. And it does this by using all the information that it's gathered from the rest of your past history, from your life that you've lived. And it uses that to predict what will happen in the future to ensure that you can survive it. When you take a leap of faith, you're stepping into the unknown. So your subconscious mind has no data as to how you will survive in this unknown space. So when you take that leap of faith, all of your subconscious fears, your uncertainties, your self-doubts, all of that will be brought up. And if you're aware of it, then you're much more able to see it for what it is and to be able to handle it and stay in the right space. If you don't know how to handle it, then you're likely to get buffeted and bumped around. You're likely to doubt yourself, which will make you step back rather than step forward into what you're trying to create. You might feel that you can't do it and falter and not take that leap of faith. You might get to a stage and not think it's possible. And by thinking it's not possible, you might then give up your leap of faith and choose something safer halfway down the road. All of these things are incredibly important because when you know what your subconscious programmings are, what you know your subconscious beliefs and fears are, then when they come up, you can go, ah, there we go, I'm just doubting myself. I've done that hundreds of times before. It's not actually real. It's just a subconscious fear I have and I'm going to ignore that and carry on anyway. And that's very important when you're making this step. Now, when I came to the UK, um, as I said, I handed over my financial security to both my father and my ex-husband. And when things didn't go according to plan, they got very fearful. So not only did I doubt myself, 
but I had the people that basically held the power over my life who were also doubting my, my capabilities. And that compounded my fear that I would be able to create what I wanted to create. Um, in this particular instance, I stepped back very drastically from them both. And that's not to say that they were wrong. It's just what I needed to do to be able to create the space I needed to be able to carry on with my life as I wanted it. And that was one of the best things that I ever did, was to take back control over my own life. It released the pressure that they were putting on me and allowed me to start and move forward as I wanted to. And the final thing that I want to share with you, number four in our steps to taking a leap of faith, is learning how to work with source. So I've already mentioned how the subconscious works and that stepping into the unknown, you are going to feel fearful. Your subconscious is going to feel very uncomfortable because it doesn't have the data that it thinks it needs to make sure that you'll survive. But it doesn't mean that you won't survive. And energetically, when we feel fearful or we're uncertain or we don't trust the process, we close ourselves off, we step back and we want to protect ourselves. But when we do that, we disconnect from source. So in the fourth step, what you're going to need to do is A, to make sure that you keep that trust and ensure that you have a good relationship with source, that you stay in alignment. When you feel fear, when you feel uncertainty, when you doubt yourself, take time out to meditate, to reconnect, to see the truth of life and that actually being in alignment allows everything to come true. Make sure that you create space for inspiration so that Source can guide you through the right steps to creating what you want to create. And I know I've shared this with you before in one of my other sharings at some point, but when I was starting my coaching business and I shifted from coaching sort of individuals to doing corporate coaching, I just had the idea that that was what I wanted to do. And it was having the curiosity to speak to everyone around me about it. I didn't know how that possibility was going to show up. I ended up going to my son's sports day and was talking to one of the parents there and was sharing with them what I was wanting to do. And it just so happened that they were looking for somebody exactly like me. So it's having the inspiration and having the curiosity of a child because you just don't know where the next lead is going to take you to help you create what you want. Source is always there. It has your back. It wants you to succeed. It is only for you to be able to be open, to keep stepping forward in curiosity, to be able to create anything that you truly want to create. And if you want to access any more of my resources, you can find them on my website, which will be in the show notes below. Um, I've got free courses, I've got paid courses, I have, um, I coach people, so if you want to set up a free chemistry call with me to see if working with me is something you'd like to do, then just look on my website and contact me and I'll get back to you. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.